Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. This time we head to New York City. The Bill Farrell International is coming up November 9th through the 12th. Also, we'll be adding the U.S. Non-Olympic Weight Class World Team Trials to this event. Joining us to talk about it is the Tournament Director of Wrestling for the New York Athletic Club, Holman Tavakolian. Uh, am I close on the name? I, I can screw it up 16 <laughs> ways from Sunday. Mo, how close was I? Scott, that was pretty close, uh, but feel free to call me Mo. It's a lot easier. It's, uh, Let's do that. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you what, I appreciate uh, your, your, your humoring me. Uh, I will work on it. I promise you that. All right, let's talk about it. It's set uh, for literally, uh, oh, it's, it's like a week and a half away or, or thereabouts. This has uh, uh, been retitled. This is a former New York Athletic Club holiday tournament, and uh, the former New York uh, – uh, international. So we've retitled it the Bill Farrell. Let's start there. Why Bill Farrell? Well, you know, Bill Farrell was the godfather of NYC wrestling. He was the president of the NYC. Um, he also was the chairman of the NYC uh, wrestling for many, many years before passing that on to Sonny. So after he, he passed, we figured it's only appropriate to name this tournament, which he started uh, after him. And this year you've chosen, and many have voted on it, I'm sure, uh, to salute a dear friend of mine. And uh, Cedric Agonian is a, uh, a man that was taken from us just a couple years ago. Um, lost him way too early, but a man who dearly loved wrestling and dearly loved being a citizen of the, of the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, Cedric was always a mentor for me at the club, and he was one of, he was a face that walked around. He was there pretty much every single uh, night, uh, as I remember. So what we do at the tournament, since I took it over, uh, decided to honor and recognize uh, our own uh, volunteers and our own uh, wrestling uh, patriots and friends. So this year, uh, I got a call from... Uh, Valentin Jordanov of Bulgaria, and he asked me if we're doing anything for Cedric, and I said I was actually thinking about it. So we kind of brainstormed, and we decided that it's very appropriate to honor Cedric uh, before the finals of this year's tournament in, on Friday, freestyle. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, we're going to do a little ceremony for him. There's Bulgarian delegates and diplomats coming in. We got a bunch of Armenian de uh, diplomats as well. And I believe his priest from the church he used to go to is coming too. His wife will be there, so we will honor her, his wife. And I I'm excited. Um, along with him, we're also honoring our Larry Cantor, who's had many years of service, John Lorenzi, and Tom Courtney. So this has become an annual tradition now for us. So every year I try to applaud and honor and recognize a lot of uh, the people that make this tournament run. I mean, Scott, I don't know if you're aware, but this tournament is fully funded by donations and volunteers so it's 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 it takes a lot i mean for me that whole week of the tournament um, i i don't think i'll be home much so we're all running around the whole wrestling club comes together we got outsiders that are stepping it up we got people volunteering their time coming in standing by the door collecting tickets or running the tables for us so the least we could do is give them a little shout out um and with with uh Cedric, as you know, he was a big man, so he deserves everything. And I hope we meet uh, the expectations of the Bulgarian Wrestling Federation in this uh, ceremony. And, you know, you mentioned Armenia. He was a proud Armenian, but had to depart that country because of uh, what was going on there, literally escaping with his life, coming to the United States with about $3.68 in his pocket and uh, made himself into uh, a United States citizen, becoming a metal expert and uh, manufacturing some beautiful, beautiful art, as I call it. Uh, it's cool that we would be honoring him, and then, of course, Bill Farrell, a man you described as being the godfather, if you will, of, of wrestling at the New York Athletic Club, the 72 Olympic coach. Uh, there's a special significance this year in that you're adding the U.S. non-Olympic weight world team trials. This is... Um, a sample, I think, of, of things to come and things that we hope might happen with the United States uh, effort for the Olympics. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is this was a great move. Uh, I, we got the call from USA Wrestling uh, asking us if we would be able to host it. And I said, why not? This is a great event. Instead of us having six-way classes, let's make it eight-way classes by including those two non-Olympic weights. And the more exposure for the sports, the better, in my opinion, and this attracts a lot of our athletes that didn't make the Olympics. So this tournament, I think it's going to be very, very exciting with everyone that's signing up for it to compete. And it's great for the sport. It's great for USA wrestling. And it's great 
for all of our athletes as well. So those that win their way through this event have an opportunity to compete at the non-Olympic weight world, uh, uh, world championships in Budapest, Hungary this December. So literally, this can be that next stepping stone. The, now, are wrestlers that competed in the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, are they eligible to compete? I, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I mean, I would run that by USA Wrestling. I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, think so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that question. I'll talk with Gary Abbott about that when I uh, uh, talk to him later today. But only wrestlers who meet U.S. citizenship requirements necessary to compete will be eligible. Is that correct? Correct. So what we're doing is we're opening up the six Olympic weight classes for everyone, all international athletes and domestic uh, athletes. But the U.S. Um, the U.S. athletes... Uh, U.S. citizens could only compete at the non-Olympic weight classes. So we're planning to run the non-Olympic weight classes on one mat and uh, six uh, Olympic weight classes on the other two mats. Okay. Now, it's going to be a little crazy for the announcers, I'm sure. <laughs> Me being one of them, i got to tell you, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how we juggle this around. But we'll have two mats going. Non-Olympic weights uh, for Greco are 71 kilos and 80 kilos. What weights are you going with uh, for men's freestyle? For men's freestyle, it's uh, the 70 kilos, and uh, I believe the 61 kilos. 61 and 70. Okay, women's freestyle, I understand, are 55 and 60. Uh, Are athletes allowed to make scratch weight? I uh, I believe we're giving two uh, two kilos allowance, as always. Okay. All right. So that that's cool because you know what? This is really uh, a, a terrific opportunity for guys that just can't make the other weights that uh, we are wrestling internationally right now. I think it's a very positive move by the the world, really, and the um, uh, uh, and specifically the U.S. Uh, because we have so much affection for these guys and gals, and, and, and uh, we are on the doorstep of a new tomorrow for wrestling. Uh, all competitors are required to have UWW license. Other than that, where do wrestlers stay? How does the New York Athletic Club do what it does to make an event like this happen? Are wrestlers uh, expected to uh, take care of their own expenses, travel, lodging, and things like that? Or how does it all work? Uh, like I said, I mean, with this tournament, it's fully funded on fundraising. So, yes, I know we're asking a lot from our athletes to come in, but um, it's a great event. So all the athletes, what, what we do is we try to set up some arrangements with local uh, hotels. As you know, Manhattan is very, very expensive. So I start negotiating hotel rates in January right after this tournament. And uh, that's how we do it. Uh, reach out to them and just ask them to come in. Um, I know it's asking a lot, but... It's been going on for 50 years. Just the tradition continues. And that's why I applaud everyone that participates in this. I know they have to pay out of pocket, but the competition is great. It's a great feel. It's got that old school tournament feel to it. So it always works out. It always works out. Everyone's happy. Everyone gets great mat time. And it's double elimination, too. So you get two matches at least. At least two matches. How about that? Uh, folks, we're, we're talking about wrestling. We're talking about the NYC event that's coming up, non-Olympic uh, uh, weight world team trials uh, in particular, to be held at the New York Athletic Club, November 9th through the 12th. Wednesday, women's freestyle uh, gets underway, and uh, that'll be at 3 And 3.30, the freestyle weigh-ins and a competition on Thursday. Women's freestyle, men's freestyle registration. And, of course, we'll have some uh, uh, continuing events.